Okay, today's experiment is going to be reverse engineering the National Geographic DVD box set. This is one of the fun things about engineering is actually reverse engineering things, which is going back and figuring out how things work so you can do new things with it. So the National Geographic box set was put out in the late 2000s, and it was a digital edition of every magazine that was ever created. Uh, I grew up as a young kid looking at my grandfather's old National Geographic magazines because I really loved the photography. Today, I really like going back and looking through them because it's interesting to see in a historical context how things have changed, uh, not just from the articles and the photography, um, but even the ads reflect how life in America has changed over the years. Uh, so it's really interesting to see. The problem with the box set today is that it was based on an obsolete technology. It was based on Adobe Air. So Adobe Air was a nice way to present the magazine without allowing people to go ahead and just take the raw JPEG images out of the CD and use them elsewhere. Uh, today it's an obsolete technology. You can't install it. Uh, the official solution from National Geographic is go buy a digital subscription, look at them online. So my challenge was, what can I do to convert these DVDs into collections of JPEGs that I can then put together into PDFs or whatever I want to do with them? So when you look at the DVD, uh, as we see in the kind of the top left corner, you'll see that there's an installer for the Adobe Air application. There's a Mac installer. Uh, CNG folder has thumbnails that are used by the Adobe Air application, but what we're really interested in are the disk folders. When you go into the disk folder, you'll see an images folder, and then it'll have the years by decade. So 199X is 1990s, 200X is the 2000s. Uh, this isn't a full DVD for this demo, I'm just using a small subset. When you go into the year decade, you'll see a folder having a four-digit year, two-digit month, two-digit day of the magazine release date. Going into that folder, you'll see nothing but CNG files. So what is a CNG file? But it's not a standard file type like a JPEG or a PNG or a BMP file. There are a lot of folks out there that did work converting these and determining how um, they were converted. And I used a lot of that information to develop a macro-enabled Excel sheet that would, does this for me. So the key to understanding what the CNG file is, is to really look at what a JPEG file is. In the bottom right, I have both a CNG and a JPEG open of the same file type. So the first thing you typically will look at is the signature at the beginning of a file. This is what's used to tell the operating system what file type it is so the operating system can determine what programs do I need to open it. In particular, in bytes six through nine, in a JPEG file, you'll always see JFIF. This, this tells it's a JPEG image file. Looking at the CNG files, it looks like completely different information, but if you look at bytes six through nine, you'll notice they always have the same values. Now it's not JFIF, it's a completely different value, but the fact that they are consistent tells us that they might have just simply converted that JPEG into something else using a mathematical function, and we might be able to decrypt it that way. And that's exactly what they did. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how this Excel workbook works, and then I'll take you inside the conversion process itself. So when you open the Excel workbook, you're really just prompted for a root folder and a destination. So I'll browse to where my DVD is. I'll select the DVD and click OK. It'll populate this field. I'll browse to where I want my JPEGs to be. I'll select temp folder, and then I'll hit convert CNG. The routine will browse recursively through every folder on the DVD looking for CNG files, and every CNG file it finds, it'll run the conversion, and then copy the entire folder structure onto your destination folder. So if we look in our temp folder now, we'll see that I have a disk one, images, just like we had on the DVD. You'll see all the full decade folders. We'll open up 1990, we'll see 1995, and when I open that, we now have JPEGs instead of CNG files. So 
the heart of this conversion is ridiculously simple, actually. So there's a function inside here. If you look at the, the VBA code inside of the Excel sheet, you'll see a convert file function, and it just takes the source file and the destination file. We open up the source file, and we read it as a binary file into an array. Then we go ahead and close the array. The next step is to go through that array, and every byte we simply do an XOR with the value of 239 and convert that byte uh, using that function. Then that entire array is just written back to a file and saved as a JPEG. So this spreadsheet will decrypt an entire DVD, depending on the speed of your computer and your CD drive, of course, uh, the time will vary. I ran this on an old laptop, it's about five years old, uh, and it took about 30 minutes or so to process an entire DVD. Um, it, when it's done, it'll give you a total count of files and folders. Again, this was only run on a subset for this video. I don't want to wait a half an hour to churn through the video. Uh, so it only ran 666 files. But if you go to the summary tab, it'll show you all the files that were converted and where they were put. Uh, and if there was an error, it'll tell you what the error is as well. I'll leave a link to this Excel workbook in the video description. This is all based on code that I'd gotten from others online, so there's nothing proprietary here. So feel free to take this and modify it as you need for your specific uses. Um, the next steps from here would, for most folks, probably be to convert these into PDFs, and you can easily do that with open source or Adobe tools to convert these JPEGs into PDFs. I prefer to leave them as JPEGs. Um, that way it's easy for me to use them for other purposes uh, and just view the, the raw image files. But that's the trick. Um, so I hope you find this useful. Have a great day.